Hi everyone, I am Nutrix and today we're talking about additive synthesis. Yes, this old synthesis that it's kind of obscure and bizarre and actually pretty difficult to use because it takes time. It's not a fast synthesis. It's something that is less intuitive, I would say. So let's actually dive in into the K5M from Kawaii which was made in 1987, 88, something like that. If you want to hear the, the sound of it, I have another video where I just play back the original banks that came with it. You need to understand that the memory is limited and you needed to load each of the bank one at a time to have access to these sounds. And it was kind of filling up the whole memory and there was like nine of them. So if you wanna hear what it can do, go see that video and just gonna hear the sound of how it works. And also how to send and receive memory from a hardware device, it's basically using system exclusive. And I'm gonna do another video about just system exclusive and how we use it to back up memory and uh, send back memory. It's especially useful for hardware synthesizer, of course, and older one, because for a lot of years, that was the only way of saving memory, or it would also be possible to use something like a card, you know, some type of a memory card um, that you would actually put it into the machine if they had it, like the K5M has a card memory. There's a card slot you put that in and you can actually save uh, the memory. So, but that was something advanced to have a memory card for your your device and the technology changed so much that at one point it was not stable to have these because after five years they would not make any of them because it was an old technology whereas a system exclusive always worked because you could just back up as a file on your computer and then load it back in later on so i'll do a video just for that again uh, if it's already ready look on the links below it should be in the description so let's talk about additive synthesis first of all we need to understand what the concept is the original concept of additive synthesis is basically to say any sound can be broken down into frequencies you know all these simple frequencies are making the harmonics the harmonics the the what is some, some people call them partials the fundamental of the sound all these frequencies are what makes a sound specifically that sound, you know? And all of them, how do they interact with each other? Are they in phase, out of phase? Are they very loud, very sh very um, soft? Do they play long? I mean, imagine this like additive synthesis basically promises the fact that you can recreate any sound if you have enough harmonics. Honestly, if you have like 128, it's just massively capable of doing what you want, but you would need a separate envelope for each of the sine waves. That's what it is, because then you can control how each of them can actually evolve in time and be present or not, and, and create that evolution of, let's say, a piano sound or a violin string. And if you talk about the violin string, for example, there's so many ways to play it that depending how you play the string, the harmonics will not be the same, they will not stay at the same time, some will resonate longer or the other, so there's all of these things have to be taken into account when you actually program a sound in, in you know, theory for additive synthesis. Now, when the K5M came out, there was two models, there was the K5, which is the keyboard version, and the K5M, which is the module, the rack mount, which is the same brain, basically, same system exclusive, same memory, same patches. You can have do, do exactly the same. It's just that there's not a keyboard for it. It's not a keyboard. It's just a module. Let's see. 
romantic, the name of the sound. You've got internal or external. External is from the card. Internal, external. Again, this is the multi, this is, or the multi, this is the single. There's a cursor pad just here. So you've got a rotary wheel and you've got cursors to move around in that window. You have your card to save, you have a contrast display, and you will play with this depending on the angle you're looking at the screen. Protection memory on or off, phone right on the front panel, and then you've got this section, which is really of the synthesis part. Just keep in mind that this, a single mode, you can play one sound, but a multi-mode, you can play 15 different sounds on 15 different channels, and this can play 16 different notes at the same time. So you could have 15, actually 14 mono phonic sound, and one with two, uh, two notes being played polyphony of two or you can just bring it down to four or five so this could be used the multi could be used uh, in two ways either you want to use it to layer sound so you create a bigger sound so you have like four different pads and string on top of each other and you can control them separately like if you play louder one can become louder the other one becomes softer like if you play louder, you have one that is shorter and more like an impact, and you play softer, you have one that is longer and more like a pad. So you can play with that. Um, or you can have them all on separate MIDI channel and have this playing different parts. You know, you could have like four notes on, let's say you have two notes on the bass on channel one, um, six notes on the piano on channel two, um, you know, 10 notes on the violin on channel five, whatever it is. So you can really combine that into creating a, a kind of multi timbral synthesizer. So it's really powerful for the time. Keep in mind, this was released in 1988, 1989. So this was the most affordable ways to do additive synthesis compared to using a sync clavier, which is still today a lot of money to have. Let's say you go with a single edit. When you press single, you've got the whole list of the entire bank you have right now. You have 12 sounds into window one, window B, window or A, B, C, and D. These are the four different internal banks. And for all of the banks, you have 12 different memories. So bank one, sound number eight. Bank B, sound number nine. Bank C, sound number four. So it's easy to navigate and you have the name on screen. So you know exactly, oh, I wanna have uh, E to roll or Miles D or, you know, whatever it is. And when you start to edit, you go edit, now you have this window. Right now I'm in single, single basic. So we start with the first window here, the first page, the DFG, which is the digital frequency generator. Think of it as where you want to control your fundamental, you know. So this is the basic note you want to play. Um, so you have the coarse tune, the fine tuning, you have the key tracking, um, you have uh, depth for modulation. Do you want envelope to control this? There's an envelope just for this, so that it's a pitch envelope, basically. You have the pitch band, the value, and semitone. You've got how many LFO, how much LFO you want to send to this, and the pressure. Zero is the pressure, pressure here. This is basically how you want the pitch to respond to all of these controls. And if you want to see the envelope, it's right under it. There's a line showing you that this is the envelope. It's an old one. So you have the different segment the rate and the level so the rate and level from one to six are very very powerful when you think about the amount of of what you have here something you have on a lot of digital synthesizer in the 80s and 90s like the jb2080 and stuff like that you had a lot of rate and level controls and there's a loop so you can actually activate loop at three four so you can go one two three four and loop three four then the second one two is the digital harmonic generator. It, look at it as, as 
kind of choosing your wave shape in a subtractive synthesizer. This is where you decide, oh, it is going to be a sawtooth or a square wave, uh, a triangular wave, a, you know, a sawtooth with a pulse, whatever it is. But what you have instead is all the harmonics, all every one of the frequencies, 128 frequencies. So that's where the difficulty lies is how do I know the harmonic content of a sawtooth? Well, I know because I like this and I read about it. Or a square wave, where a square wave has all the fun, all the frequencies, all the harmonics frequencies, and there, but only the odd ones. So it has the fundamental, which is the one, the three, the five, the seven, and, the, and all the other one. You turn them off. Whereas the sawtooth, you have the first, the, the fundamental, and the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of them are there. But as as you go away from the fundamental, they go lower in intensity. So this is kind of what you see here. You've got a lot, a row of all of these going down here as you go away from the original, the fundamental. And at some point you have smaller ones coming in. So when you want to move around this window, you have the cursors to move around. And if you go, let's say on harmonics here, this one, I can actually select the harmonic I want to play with. And when you move them, it shows you the intensity of each one. So this one, the first one, two, three, four, and you see the value of the intensity, the envelope it's using, and the modulation. Now keep in mind that you have, in this one, four different envelopes. Instead of having one envelope for each of the harmonics, you can have four different envelopes that can be assigned to the different harmonics and have at least four different parts of your same sound change in a specific way so it recognizes or it feels like you're playing let's say a piano sound or a violin sound so the hardest part of of doing this is not doing it is knowing what envelope should harmonic number five in a piano sound do i don't know by heart so you need to have some type of document with the analysis of the evolution of your all your harmonics to understand that, okay, in a violin, this is how this happened. In the bass, this is how it's happening. So you need to have some type of guiding book. I have one. I have, I have this old book I go back to often, which is the uh, Synthesis Guide to Acoustic Instruments from um, who's, uh, Howard Massey, Alex Noyes, and Daniel Sclair. In this case of this document here, this book, that's why I'm keeping it, it will analyze, let's say, a piano sound, and it will tell you, okay, if you want to recreate that in uh, in subtractive synthesis, if you want to recreate that, recreate that in additive synthesis, with FM synthesis, with uh, a phase modulation synthesis. So this is a really great book, and I don't know if it's still available. Knowing that, basically, that's why a lot of people took these devices and basically just loaded the sound made for them and did only changes to them. Because knowing how a actual bass, electric bass, should react, I'm going to guess it. I, and, I, and it's hard to do it by here. It was one of the first synthesizers to actually be able to modify a knob and play it in real time and hear it so for for additive synthesis so it's it's good but still you have to modify 128 different sine waves so it's still interesting it's still powerful but think of me if you look at you've got the harmonic you have the intensity you have the envelope it's using you have the modulation do you want it to receive modulation or not because it could be stable or you want it to react to modulation. You can select a range. If you go here at 16, you want you see here you're selecting a range. Okay. And you can say all of them, I want them to be uh, you know, using envelope number one, and I don't want them to respond to modulation. 
or you can say I want all the odd ones to use envelope number one, all the envelopes to use envelope number two, or the even one to envelope number two, all the octave value to be on envelope number three, or uh, the fifth. <laughs> So it's really musical. <clears throat> so you can find a way to make it happen without just just by playing and creating stuff, which is interesting. And then we're working on source number two or s oscillator number two. You can actually turn it and select. Oops, I'm going to go up up at the top. You can say I'm going to select s source number one or oscillator number one or both of them. So. If you want them to react the same way, you can actually do that in this way. So that's for the harmonics. And it has its own envelope. And you see the four different envelopes here. So you have four envelopes just for this. You have one envelope just for the pitch. And you have, then you get the filter, which is a digital for a filter. Really just to give it more control when you're content is already packaged the right way. So basic stuff you need here, you're going to cut off how it's going to be controlled by envelope, by velocity, by pressure, by keyboard follow, by LFO as its own envelope again and get the DDA, which is basically the amplifier and you have the envelope for the amplifier. Then you have the last one, which is DFT, which is a formant filter. It works like an 11 band graphic equalizer. It's a formant filter, but you can actually go in and say and you have the LFO the shape, the speed, the delay. And you see, this is actually, I find this interesting. You look at the shape, you've got a, a number, one. If you want to know what no, one is, you've got triangular, square, sawtooth. So depending if you, the number you change here, you're going to pick one of these different shape of LFO. Pretty cool. So this is, this is what it does as a single, you know, in the single mode. If you go into multi-mode, let's say you pick, I don't know, one, romantic. You go into edit. Now there's a different way to work this. You've got window one, window two, window three, and window four. Window one, you see all of your sounds here. One to five, you press on this, the same window. You go from one to five, six to 10, and 11 to 15. And for all of them, well, in this case, you can select the sound, the internal patch, the zone it's gonna play on the keyboard, the polyphony is gonna use, which output you're going to use because there's a mix output and there's actually four individual outputs at the back of this. Same thing with uh, the second B window, but then you're talking about the velocity, the tuning, the transpose, the level and the output, which output you're going to use. Same thing for the 15 of them. Third one, will it respond to pedal sustain, to expression pedal, to pressure, to pitch band, to modulation wheel, to volume control. And the last one is 
hold, the sustain hold pedal, portamento, program change, you want it to receive program change and change, and velocity. So all of them, they're very simple to use. I mean, you have all of them separately, but basically the first one is the most important because you're picking the sound, the zone, the polyphonies, you know, uh, amount each of them will use. And then you're basically stacking them up. This is the K5M. I hope you understand a bit more what it can do. If you find it interesting, well, you know, look at it or look at different additive synthesis or maybe look at it online. It's still something you can find, eas well, not easily, but it's still something you can find on, on eBay and stuff. Stay safe, make more music. See you soon.